Hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Richard Griscom and today's speaker is Agustino Caguema. Agustino is an assistant lecturer at Mkwawa University College of Education, which is a constituent college of the University of Dar es Salaam. Agustino received his master's in linguistics from Osmania University in India and Agustino is now starting a project funded by the Endangered Languages Documentation Program to document the Kimbu language of Tanzania. Please join me in welcoming Agustino as he gives his presentation, Kikimbu Documenting Nomadism in Central Tanzania. Thank you, Richard. I, I received my MA Linguistics from Osmania University in India, and I did my BA in Education from the University of Dar es Salaam. Currently, I'm working as assistant lecturer at Mkwawa University College of Education, which is situated here in Uringa, Southern Highlands of Tanzania. Today, I'm going to present on a topic like small, like a proposal that I wrote for my grant. So I'll be presenting on what I'm going to do and why should I do that? Uh, my project is entitled Documenting Nomadism in Central Tanzania, and I'll be working on the language called Kikimbu. So maybe that does have a general look over Kikimbu. Kikimbu is a Bant language, which is a Niger Congo language spoken across a wide swathe of central Tanzania by loosely associated communities totaling no more than 62,000 speakers. Uh, this actually was the data that was obtained from Zalen Rogemarila 2008, probably as we speak to, as, as we speak now, maybe the number of speakers might be lesser than that. Uh, the ISO code for Kikimbu is KV, and then the geographical reference for this language is uh, latitude 32.7569 and longitude negative uh, 5.6238. But as we'll be seeing in the next slides, Kimbu as a language is spoken in three different regions of Tanzania. So this is a geographical reference for Sikonge, which is one of the districts of Tabora region in Western Tanzania. Then Kimbo as a language has alternative names. Sometimes it is called Ikibungu, sometimes it is called Kikimbu, sometimes it is called Yanzi. And this Kikimbu, as you might be knowing here in Tanzania, comes from uh, this traditional, I mean, Swahili way of naming the language. So Ki is, stands for language. Then, as I just mentioned, Kimbu is a Bantu language found in F group of uh, and then, as I, I said, Kimbu is spoken in three major regions of Tanzania, Tabora to the west, Singida to the center of Tanzania, and Chunya, which is a bit southern highland of Tanzania. But in these three regions, Kimbu is not spoken in, uh, in that bigger size because it's only one district of each region where Kimbu is spoken. For example, in Tabora, only Skonge, you can find Kimbu speakers, while in Singida, you'll find Kimbu speakers at Manyoni district, while in Mbea, you'll find them in Chunya district. Then, uh, to begin, why? do I think that Kimbu is an endangered language as for now? First of all, the small size of the language community, as I said at the beginning, 
Kimbu is spoken by about 62,000 speakers. And very unluckily, this small population of 62,000 speakers is sparsely distributed into three different regions where other big languages in Tanzania are spoken. For example, in Tabora, Kimbu is spoken in Iskonge, where Nyamwezi is also spoken. In Mbea, Kimbu is spoken in Chunya, where Nyakusa is also spoken. While in Singida, it is spoken in Manyoni, where Nyiramba and Nyaturu are spoken. So in this case, Kimbu is endangered because it has a small number of speakers and this small number of speakers is distributed sparsely where other languages which are considered big in Tanzania are spoken. Also, ethnologue reports that speakers of Kimbu often identify themselves as others, somehow not indigenous to the areas they inhabit. Uh, if you go to ethnologue, for example, it is reported that these Kimbu speakers, normally they identify themselves as others. That means like they do not form part of the indigenous to the area that they inhabit. And Kimbu, like other ethnic languages in Tanzania, is accord, afforded no status in Tanzanian life. And it is effectively banned from use in schools radio and political discourse. Maybe this might look like a, a more generic factor for Kim endangerment because ethnic languages in Tanzania are afforded no status when it comes to official matters or issues related to the government or wider communication. It is Swahili or Kiswahili which is used in Tanzania widely as a national language. So it is used in different social contexts as well as other formal contexts. In this case, not only Kimbu, but many, many languages spoken in Tanzania are endangered because Kiswahili makes them smaller languages as a result they are endangered. For, for this matter, Kimbu is as well endangered. But not only that, but also Kimbu is losing speakers at a rapid rate because it was reported in 1987 that Kimbu had about 78 speakers, 78,000 speakers, but in 2000, and eight, about 20 years or so, it was reported that Kim has 62,000 speakers. So you can see within this period of 20 years, about 18,000 speakers of this language are lost. Well, according to Gabriel Helena in her paper, she reports that intergenerational transmission of the Kimbu language has virtually ceased and that it is only spoken by elderly. So she did a research on intergenerational transmission of Kimbu language and she went to the field in Skonge and she found that the intergenerational transmission of this language has virtually ceased. That is to say, people are now not using the language, I mean, not transmitting the language from one generation to another generation. And the evidence of that, uh, in the region, only adult people speak this language, that is Kimbu. In most cases, the young generation does not use this language. And this is largely because of the influence of Kiswahili and the intermingling of different communities in Tanzania who speak different languages, who get intermarried, and as the result, the new generation are somewhere in between. They can neither speak their father's language nor their mother's language, 
instead they speak Swahili. And probably this might be a case of myself, where I was born with my parents from Nyakusa language, my father and my mother from Nyamwe's language, and then I can understand Nyamwe's, I can understand Nyakusa, but I cannot speak these two languages. I can only speak Swahili. So this is the situation that makes Kimbu uh, an endangered language. Then, do I think Kimbu is a unique language? Yes, of course it is. Uh, the Kimbu are uniquely inter interesting in that they are Bantu speaking people who are semi nomadic. And this is a very, very interesting thing about the Kimbu community. These people are semi nomadic. That means they keep moving from one place to another place, from one area to another area. By nature, Kimbu, they are engaging themselves in different socioeconomic activities like mixed farming and I mean, uh, keeping of cattle. So what happens is that these communities, they used to move even when you read the history of the Kimbu community, it is written in literature that the Kimbu are nomadic in nature. From all, from long time ago in the history, they were just keeping on moving from one area to another area in search of pasture and water for the cattle. Also, they were moving because of dominance by other groups in the area where they inhabited. As such, this Kimbu community, these people, they do not only have their language endangered, but also their way of life, that is nomadism, is endangered. And this is not only endangered because they just want to, 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 to stop moving from one place to another place, a bit because of the Tanzanian government policies which tries to restrict people to settle in one place and do their socioeconomic activities, partly because they want people to have permanent settlement and they want to preserve uh, water resources because if people are moving uh, frequently from one place to another place, it might uh, damage, I mean, I mean, endanger the availability of water in the community. And then Kimbu as a language is unique in Tanzanian context because nothing is known about its sounds, structure, or larger grammar. And interestingly, a few days ago, for example, I was talking to a Kimbu speaker and uh, he was telling me Actually, he was joking that uh, Kimbu is a very good language. It has very good sounds in Tanzania than any other language. And he was like, well, Kimbu is like French. So when somebody speaks Kimbu, it's like French. But that was a joke. But what I, I wanted to say is, in Tanzania, this language is not only known, to Tanzanians, but also to other scholars, because very few, very little is done on this language. At first, I didn't find any material, linguistic material about Kimbu, except for the occasional footnotes in former colonial explorers' ethnographic accounts. However, last month or so, I got some data on Kimbu. This was a word list of few words which were written by Marcele on his PhD thesis. So I came to know that some few words were there, which of course will serve as a very, very essential uh, resource for my project. Then, How do I document this language? What will I do? 
The principal documentation of the project covers Kimbu nomadism, as I just said. But what will I be doing about this topic? I'll be doing different things, but this will be about one political economy. Political economy. This will include how do people organize their society, how do they derive sustenance from the environment. So I will be looking at how the Kimbu people organize their society. How do they derive sustenance from their environment? How do they sustain? How do they struggle against their nature, against nature? So I will also be looking at the patterns of movement. That means, as I said, I will be focusing on nomadism. That means movement from one place to another place. So I'll be looking at their pattern of movement. How do they move across the land? When they want to move from one place to another place, either in search of water or pasture, how do they move? What sorts of shelters do people build and use? Because when they move across their land, that means they will need maybe permanent or temporary shelter for their life, okay? So I will be looking at the, the pattern of movement. Similarly, I will be looking at the family structure and inheritance. Then I will, in this aspect, I try to look at what does marriage look like? Is there a land or livestock to be inherited? Because in different communities, evidence shows that there is a kind of inheritance of livestock or land in the family. So I want to, to know in this community, in Kimbo, who inherits the land or livestock, daughters or sons? Because in some communities, it's only sons who can inherit properties of the family. In some communities, it's only daughters who can inherit properties of the community. So I'll be looking at that as well. Again, Kimbu speakers will be now, because I'm talking about documentation methods, that I'll go to the field and what will I be doing then? I'll be, first of all, seeking for the informed consent of these Kimbu speakers. When I get their consent, I will video and audio record them explaining and describing as well as demonstrating these uh, elements of Kimbu nomadism, which are just mentioned. So I will be doing that in the field right from the next month. This project aims to take a snapshot of people's experience with this lifestyle, that is nomadism. That means I want to explain on people's experience about nomadism. How do they experience this lifestyle and the stories, rituals, and other linguistic arts that derive from it? So this is very important because it is from this nomadism where I will be able to derive different linguistic data for analysis, not only for the current project, but also it will serve as a corpus for the future studies on this kind of study. And then I will be audiovisual recording, uh, but it's not just audiovisual recording people, but this will be taking place in a variety of different contexts because I'll be talking about nomadism. So it's important to do it at home with cattle in the field or in the forest, capturing a variety of different activities, for example, proce uh, procedural texts or explanations, rituals, dialogue, interviews, and many other things that are related to Kimbu nomadism. So what do I expect at the end of this project? I approximate that 20 
hours of audio visual recording will be collected. Then I will have photos of artifacts, photos of consultants and other important contexts will also be taken in JPG format, employing the video camera. Okay, then the second part of this project, focusing on more formal types of linguistic documentation, will focus on collecting lexical material using the SIL Comparative African Word List. So I will be trying to collect lexical material word list for the Kimbu language, as well as morphosyntactic material using the burnt morphosyntactic parameters developed by Gibson uh, and Martin. So this one will be the most linguistic aspect of my project, trying to gather the word list of Kimbu, as well as trying to do some kind of analysis of morphosyntactic patterns of this language. So this material, that means uh, word list as well as uh, morphosyntactic material will be collected through formal elicitation. Elist elist so I'll be listing on word list, I'll be trying to collect as many words as possible and trying to get different morphosyntactic patterns of the Kimbu language. Well, this project will employ an ethnographic approach. And this is maybe the question that tries to have some kind of challenges. I'm trying and I'm planning to do a, a kind of an ethnographic fieldwork and at the end, I would want some comments from this, if possible, on how to go about it. But in this case, I am planning to go to the feed for three months, but these months won't be three consecutive months. I'm planning to go for three long trips. The first trip would be in this November and then next year in February and in April. I'll go for three months in the field and then I'll collect some data and come to for analysis. So as I said at the beginning that Kimbu is spoken in three different language uh, regions of Tanzania, Tabora, Mbea and, and Singeda. So my focus will only be in Skonge district in Tabora region as an initial step for this kind of project. Hopefully in the future, I will develop this project. So all these materials will be given metadata arranged into bundles, backed up, and uploaded to the archive. Um, as Richard said, this is an ELDP project. So I expect to archive my data collected from the feed to the E Il archive to ELDP archive, the um, Endangered Language Archive. Then my plan is to archive Kimbu material with all metadata in English as well as Swahili, because I expect that this material won't only be used by non-Swahili speakers, but also by Swahili speakers as well. Then what are the goals of this project? Well, I have divided the goals into two categories. One, descriptive goal, and secondly, I will have some documentary goals. With descriptive goal, this project aims at contextualizing Kimbu, both as a burnt language, but also as a language of the Tanzanian Lifty Value Area. This will be accomplished by lexical and morphosyntactic elicitation with, so as I just mentioned, I'm going to do a kind of lexical and morphosyntactic elicitation, trying to gather more and more word lists, as well as 
uh, morphosyntactic patterns of the Kimbu language. So with this, when everything is collected, I'll be trying to contextualize it now in the context of Tanzanian Rift Valley uh, area because there are many languages spoken in Tanzanian Rift Valley. So I want to fit this language to contextualize Kimbu as a Rift Valley language. Then documentary wise, this project aims to explore in depth one aspect of the social context in which Kimbu is spoken, that is nomadism. As I just said, uh, this kind of documentary goal will focus on trying to record the way of life, the Kimbu way of life, which is nomadism. I'll be focusing on semi-nomadism element of Kimbu language. And then I will provide, I am focusing and aiming at providing a high quality multipurpose audiovisual documentation of Kimbu nomadism, openly available in both English and Swahili. As I just said, I will archive this data in uh, the L archive. And at that point, I expect to do some kind of analysis, openly available in both Swahili and English, so as people of different, uh, people from Tanzania and from outside Tanzania can be able to access and use this particular thing. Finally, this is the summary of what I'm expecting to have at the end. Of course, I expect to have 40 hours of audio. They will be just recorded and I expect to have 20 hours of video and then one MD, MD per, uh, I mean, metadata file per each bundle. I'll be having a metadata per each bundle in this project. Overall, I expect, this is my expectation, that this coming year, I will be doing the transcription, translation, and the crossing for at least 15 hours, which is 25% of the entire uh, data that will be collected. That means I will try to collect 60 hours, and then from that I will do a kind of Elan flex uh, analysis of 15 hours. I will try my best to do that. And then I am planning to write one small book on Kimbo stories about nomadism, and then I will have a short grammatical sketch and take some photos. These will be 50 photos, as I said at the beginning, that I will have photos about different um, consultants, the environment, different linguistic artifacts in the feed work. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much, Asante Nisan. All right, thank you very much, Agustino, for this presentation. I think we can now begin the question and answer section. If anyone would like to ask a question or offer a comment, you can do so using the Zoom chat module. And I, I will start with my own question uh, to give uh, other participants time to write. Uh, first, I have some comments actually. So first I wanna say that I'm very excited about uh, this project. I think it's been uh, planned very well and I'm looking forward very much to the results. Um, also, I think you have uh, raised some very interesting issues. The first issue with uh, language endangerment and how the assessment of language vitality is actually a very complex issue. Uh, and that's something that I think has come up again in the literature um, in the past couple of years. So although the reported number of speakers might be 60,000, you could still very likely find uh, some changes in terms of the uh, domains of use for that particular language. Uh, but also a second thing that I find uh, very interesting here is the uh, nomadic or semi-nomadic uh, lifestyle of the Kimbu. Um, because uh, at least coming from a, a non-Bantu perspective, and I've only worked with non-Bantu communities so far in Tanzania, there's oftentimes this sort of uh, this notion that 
that uh, Bantu groups in Tanzania are more or less homogenous. That is, they're, they're all mostly the same. They have similar characteristics. They're oftentimes described as just Waswahili. Um, and one uh, aspect of, of that is that from the uh, non-Bantu nomadic people, such as the Hadza uh, and the Datoga, for example, uh, they oftentimes see the Bantu people as, as the farmers who are sedentary. Whereas here we have the Kimbu who are Bantu speakers and they are not sedentary. So I'm very interested to learn more um, about their, sedent or their uh, nomadic uh, way of life, uh, but then also how that uh, nomadism uh, interacts or shapes their interactions with other communities in the region. And so finally, after all of, the, all of those comments, I have one question for you, which is, uh, do you know of any established relationships, either positive or negative or even neutral, um, any relationships with other ethnic groups in Tanzania? Well, uh, so far, as I tried to speak to Kibu speakers, uh, I do not know any kind of negative relationship with any other ethnic group in Tanzania. But what I know is, for example, as I said, uh, just last week I was speaking to one of the Kimbu speakers and he told me that uh, what it is not really easy to get Kimbu speakers as for now, as you just mentioned, because what they do now, they do not want to identify themselves as Kimbu speakers. It has been observed also that they try to identify themselves as Nyamwezi speakers. So if you're in Iskonge, they identify themselves as Nyamwezi speakers, or in fact, they are not. Why do they do that? Because they think that the language is a small language that has no any kind of status in the community. So they feel better and recognize when they say that they are Nyamwezi speakers. In this way, what happens now, uh, the Kimbu speakers, they are actually in the position where they have good terms, good kind of relationship, I can say, but not yet proved. But as far as I know, they have good relationship with other uh, ethnic groups. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, we have a number of comments and questions now. Uh, so first from Helen Eaton, uh, she has just a comment saying uh, that she's based in Mbeya, working in language development and Bible translation, uh, which uh, is a project that includes the Bungu language spoken in Junya, as well as uh, Nyakusa, among other languages and that they have lots of questions about uh, the Kimbu. And she says, let's keep in touch. If you're ever passing through Mbeya, Karibu And then uh, Martin Maus has a question. Do you know how the Kimbu find their way in their travels with their cattle? Oh, well, maybe I would take that as a very, very good comment that I would add that to my plan that uh, maybe in the, the, the way they move from one place to another, then I would add that and try to find out how do they do that. Okay, great. And then uh, Andrew, he, he also asks, so, well, he first says, I'm interested in the specifics related to documenting nomadism. Like you said, many of the Kimbu people are no longer nomadic, but are now settled in sedentary communities. What do you think are some good ways of gaining this information if it cannot be observed directly through the daily lives of the people? Well, uh, I think one, uh, the best way is, first of all, is to, to try to have some kind of discussions with other people who can give kind of narrations of what happened in the past and what uh, they have been doing currently. And then secondly, I believe that in the field work, especially in the village areas, there are still 
people who are moving from one place to another place. They might not be moving as they used to do in the past, where they used to move as a large group. Maybe in the, at the moment, they might be moving as maybe a family or small groups of people moving from one place to another, especially uh, just at the family level. So I think I will be observing that, uh, especially in the, 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 uh, the free work, especially this way uh, from Skonge to, to, to Mbea to Chunya, there are big forests there. So I'm sure people, they might be moving a little bit further into the forest and doing settling there. So I think those are the two ways that I'll be using, trying to get some kind of narrations and experience from the speakers and two, trying to go further into the field to see if this is still happening and how it takes place. Okay, yes, then uh, Helen Eden has a second comment that uh, she has also experienced the same kind of shyness or shame about Kimbu identity in the Mbeya region. So that is something that uh, maybe is, is common throughout all of the Kimbu communities. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to add that, um, yeah, this, uh, this question of how people move or migrate or how, how do they uh, how do they engage in these nomadic ways of life is something I think has been addressed in some of the anthropological literature with the Hadza when uh, they have been doing demographic studies and uh, been tracking, well, how frequently do people move from one camp to another camp and who are they moving with and how do people come together and break apart and things like that. Uh, and so there might be some interesting things, um, some interesting patterns there. Now, I don't know if they will um, be at all related to the patterns of uh, Kimbu, but uh, there might be some parallels there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, well, uh, I think that is uh, all of the, uh, the questions that we have for now. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page and entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley bibliography. Looking ahead, the next presentation in the webinar series will be given on Wednesday, October 16th by Roland Kiesling. And the title of that presentation will be announced soon. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for participating today and I hope to see you again at our next webinar.